one of my biggest skills is I teach people their value. Mm. And I teach people, you know, you need to serve. You need to bring value. Find your intrinsic value, which is your mm. true value, right? My clothing brand, thanks to God, came from a valuable place. Mm. So it's, it was easy. And I actually don't know what would have happened if I started a clothing brand with, that wasn't attached to a story. Like my clothing brand, when I when I say, hey, my auntie died from cancer, left me $2,000, and I used to start this clothing brand where I donate money to cancer patients, would you buy a shirt? Who going to say no? Mm. But if I was like, hey, bro, I just started this clothing brand, da 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 like, there's no emotional attachment to that. No. Most people are going to say they want the shirt. That's how I start businesses. I, with any business I start, it has to have, it has to really solve a problem or hit a pain point, mm. not just to be cool. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it could actually work. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. When I came to Atlanta, she had these wristbands for me to get in some of these events. And I just started networking like crazy. And this is dude named Oatmeal who was doing a Spinnerilla play. He was running Spinnerilla. I got inside the event and I was like, anybody, I get $500. I had a little money in my, I had like $4,000 in my pocket. I was like, I'll pay to get on stage. So mm. the security guard actually introduced me to him. And he was like, bro, I ain't even going to charge you. I like your energy, dog. That's hard. So um, he let me on that stage. So he said, you're going to come on in about like 30 minutes. So I went around the crowd, got all the ladies. I was like, hey, y'all finna go up here and perform. I need y'all to all come to the front when I, when, I, when, I say, when they say my name to come perform. So they all came to the front. I had this one girl. It's all documented on my phone, too. I had this one girl uh, record me the whole time. And they was going crazy when I was on stage. Dro, young Dro, that's when I met young Dro. He was showing love. Lucci brother was showing love. Uh, everybody there was showing love. They was like, well, you did your thing. And then that's, I was like, man, I ain't leaving. I'm mm -hmm. staying. Hit so wait, like, I, I only, I don't, and I don't want to like skip past the mm -hmm. the music stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. But like, it was intriguing when you said like, when I started the clothing brand, that's when I started making the money. Yeah, the music industry made me in a, put me in a bad position. I mm -hmm. ended up homeless chasing a dream. Damn. That's what I'm saying. So when I made that situation, I was like, I'm staying out here, call my baby mom, sent her like $1,500. I said, look, I'm not coming back. I had a, my son was like five at the time, six or five or six. It was really tough, bro. Cause I, I had to make a decision. I was like, go back to Wisconsin and sell weed or whatever I was doing. And I got Crohn's disease. I can't keep a job. I said, I got to jump. Um, so I'm staying in Atlanta. Within two months, I was homeless. All mm. my money was gone. I was staying at this place called. I mean, me. yeah, you only had well, like four bands, five like bands. Like 2,500. No, I did because I gave her 1,500. <laughs> exactly. So, no, because I had four bands in my pocket right. still. Oh, okay. No, I didn't because I gave her fifteen hundred. Yeah. I was like, boom, boom, drain my bank account. It was over with. Bro, I was, I didn't in Wisconsin. I'm from Milwaukee, so we didn't have Ubers and stuff like this then. Like none of Airbnb, Uber. I didn't even know what that was until I came to Atlanta. Facts. Bro, them Ubers was destroying me, dog. That was crazy. Uh, this place called the Aloft was draining me, bro. And then one of the little chicks that was working front desk, she thought I was cute, so she was giving me a discount. But it was, after a week, two weeks, it's over with. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I ain't had no more money. I was homeless and I kept chasing the music. I was in the studios. I was working, going up to Main Street. That's Atlantic Records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, at Winter Circle with Go Grizz. I was writing. I was talking about. I was in. I was at Troy Taylor Crib writing records. I was writing. I was literally doing music. I wrote for Ruby Rose, Claremont Twins. I was trying to do stuff with our dollar sign. I was working, bro, mm. but nothing was placing nothing. And eventually, I was like, "Let me get this clothing brand started again." I knew a lot of people. I was like, "Let me." The people was like, "I like this shirt." I like this shirt. My mom had cancer. This hair is in cancer. I was like, damn, I'm like, I got something right here in Atlanta. Because I was doing it in Wisconsin. It wasn't going. You know what I'm saying? So when I, I was like, man, let me be an entrepreneur again. But once I started selling them shirts, I was like, oh, man. And then my girl actually, uh, she gave me $300. And I had $300. I put it together. And she went to California. I came back. I flipped the money. Mm. I was like, oh, it's time to go up now. No, I was lit. And it was it. I only only you not uh, point out the um the clothing line brand mm -hmm. specifically because like you was like when I started selling shirts, that's when I started making money. Yeah. And like a lot of times you hear people say like when, whenever I was able to find like, like to provide people value, mm -hmm. right? Like to to give them I don't know understand what I'm doing, why am I doing it, understanding my why. That's when I really can like 
I could change people's lives. And when you have an impact on people, that's when you start really making money. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the, the shirts definitely was for a good cause. It's cancer. Crazy, but when bro. you said, like, clothing line, I was wondering why did you choose this? the words that you chose, clothing line versus, like, once I started, like, I don't know, like, uh, once I started doing things for a cause. There's nothing wrong. I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm just yeah. picking your brain. I was yeah. wondering. Normally, I, that's actually what I teach people. I teach people. One of my biggest skills is I teach people their value. Mm. And I teach people, you know, you need to serve. You need to bring value. Find your intrinsic value, which is your mm. true value, right? My clothing brand, thanks to God, came from a valuable place. Mm. So it's, it was easy. And I actually don't know what would have happened if I started a clothing brand with, that wasn't attached to a story. Like my clothing brand, when I when I say, hey, my auntie died from cancer, left me $2,000, and I used to start this clothing brand where I donate money to cancer patients, would you buy a shirt? Who going to say no? Mm. But if I was like, hey, bro, I just started this clothing brand, da 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 like there's no emotional attachment to that. Mm. Most people are going to say they want the shirt. That's how I start businesses. I with Any business I start... It has to have, it has to really solve a problem or hit a pain point, mm. not just to be cool. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it could actually work. Yo, you know, another thing I, I think is inter interesting, like, I never seen this nowhere else but Atlanta, right? I mean, all these coaches, like everybody bro, a coach. It's crazy. And I feel so bad for everybody because like, I don't teach people how to make money at all, bro. I'll never tell somebody. I was just telling my homies, I was like, I, I feel so bad because most of these people are desperate, mm. right? Most what what these, people, the coaches or the people that the people being coached? That, people that want to be coached. Because okay. first of all, they really don't want to be coached. Right. They just want somebody to hold their hand. Right. The next thing is they're being marketed things because and getting hit with pain points. Like, if you want to make a million dollars, raise your hand. How many people want to raise their hands? Yeah, everybody want to raise their hand. But the hands. question, they say, who wants to make a million dollars? Everybody raise their hands, but that's a lie. Mm. The question is, who just wants a million dollars? Because that's mm. what they really want. They don't want to make it. They want it. So I actually realized that if you work on your mindset, you're going to make the money. Mm. Making money is not hard. Marriage is not hard. We make those things hard. Mm. You get what I'm saying? We are the issue. You know what I'm saying? Business, right. people, the way people operate in business is how they operate in relationships, and that's why their business isn't working. They say, it's funny because they say, like, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Some, I don't know if you ever heard of that. I have. Yeah, Neo, you say that many Neo times. Said, I didn't yeah. even know that, but like, yeah. yeah Neo, like, that's right. Neo's the first person I heard. He said, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Nah, he, facts. He used to see, get on me on the basketball court because I'd be going hard on the basketball I'd be getting mad. <laughs> I'd, I'd be getting, I, that's my, my character was trash on the basketball court. But actually, I'm an example that how you do everything, how you do one thing is not how you do everything. I mm. think to a certain extent, I get the purpose of that statement, but I can say that there are some people that got a couple things they got to work on. Like for mm. me, on the basketball court, I'm a, I was a horrible person. But outside of that, that wasn't me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Even my brother Matt, he'll be like, Trey, you're a different person outside the basketball court. <laughs> like you are different. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Neo. We was just hooping the other day. He said, Trey, you changed. I ain't going all, all of the, all the, I ain't see you hoop, but all of them look trash. I ain't going to lie. I, I got a shot, bro. Bro, everybody like. No, I can tell I, you, I, David Shans is the best hooper. Neo look trash. Neo not a hooper, bro. Neo ain't no Marcus, hooper. Marcus, Neo, uh, him 500 None look of them trash. Like, they look, look nah, nah, bad, bro. The hooper is Brother Ben X, David Shans. I put David Shans against anybody. He really good? Bro, David Shans can't hoop, bro. Oh, all right, all right. He can hoop, hoop. What about Duke? Finesse. Duke got a jumper. That boy can shoot. He all right? Yeah, he ain't got he ain't as good a shooter as me, but he can shoot. Oh, y'all suck. No, no, no. I don't play basketball, though. Yeah, you don't. Look at your knees. I told my ACL. Yeah. yeah you mean? I play football. Oh, yeah. Football players don't. Yeah, you one of them dudes that come in there tackling. I'll get you out the way. That's not basketball, bro. I know. I'm just saying. One-on-one, -on -one, we could bet $100. Uh, you just threatened me. I'm just saying we could bet. You going to get me out the way. Where I'm from, that's a threat. <laughs> it's a threat on the football field. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Nah. Yo, so back to, uh, back to coaching. You was like, yo, I teach people. Change that mind, then you won't get the money. That's it, bro. If you work on your mindset, the money's gonna come, bro. It's what like do you it's, mean? Little, it's little kids out here that make money, bro. It making money is not the issue. This is the thing, too, bro. If you don't have a mindset of I hate poverty, you're not gonna get no money. Mm. Okay, think of it like this. If when it comes to working out, right, there are people that want to lose weight, but they got people around them that tell them, you just big bone. Mm. Or they got people around them telling you look good just the way you are. What does that person subconsciously start to think when they look in the mirror? Oh, I'm not. I'm not that bad. Mm. They don't end up working out. Fact. But if you actually hate and are, are disgusted with how you look, guess what you're going to do? You're going to work out. Or, you know, I, I was talking to my friend the other day. Like, I think it really is what you enjoy, though. Like, I enjoy this. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm, my mind, I'm focused on this. This is what I'm focused on, yeah. right? When it comes to working out, like, I would love to work out every day, but that's not, like, what I'm focused on right now. Now, yeah. if I had, I told my friend, I was like, man, what I want to do is I need to put things in place to help me. Be motivated. Mm -hmm. For example, if I had an accountability partner, right? Yeah. Like if somebody had to go to the gym, like, yeah, I, he reminded me I'm going to the gym with them. 
I don't have to be reminded to do this mm -hmm. because this is like, this is what I'm focused on. This is what I'm, my livelihood. This is what I need to happen. The gym, not so much right now, right? You but, know what I'm saying? But, but watch this though, bro. It, it, it's, this is a fact, bro. Love, I feel like hate is a good name mm -hmm. if you use it the right way. Even no, in the yeah, Bible, yeah. God says to hate evil. Mm -hmm. You're right. Hate's not bad if you use it the right way. Hitler actually really hated something mm -hmm. and he did something drastic to change what he hated, right? Martin Luther King actually hated something and he made a drastic, did something drastic to change it. Even though Hitler, hey, he could have, imagine if Hitler would have used that hate in the right way, how much good he could have did. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I look at poverty the same way. If you don't hate it that much, you're not going to do something drastic to actually get no, away from right. it. No, you're right. I think you're you right. You know what I'm saying? You're so right. even what you're doing, for me, I was homeless. I hated that so much, I'll never go back. There are some women that, like my sister, when she used to get into it with, you know what I'm saying, with them type of dudes, she only ends up with them type of dudes or stays with the type of dude because she don't 100% hate, hate the situation. Mm. There's some benefit there, whether the dude's paying for something. There's something there that's benefiting that person, whether it's being around toxic people, being comfortable, whatever it is, scarcity mindset, whatever it is, is keeping you in that situation. Or you ain't just, you ain't learned your lesson yet. No, you can't, bro. I'm telling you, bro. It, you you can learn that lesson, bro. You learn that lesson. You, you, different, it, you learn different parts. You can, it's different it's parts you can learn. It's easy to say that. Like, some people really got, you know how some people... Some people could be like, yo, don't put your hand over the stove. It's hot. Other people got to touch it. And even still when they touch it, it wasn't that bad. I could I could withstand the pain for a second. Bro, those are toxic people. And I don't even surround myself with people <laughs> like that. I'm the type of person, I actually like to learn from other people's mistakes. Like when people always talk about OPE, other people's, OPM, other people's money, other people's this, other OPE, other people's experiences is how I get to where I'm at too. You know what I'm saying? So... I realized too, uh, when it comes to my my child, you know what I'm saying? Like I can yell at him. He can be trying to stick his uh, uh, stick his fork inside of a socket. He's smiling, he having fun. I'm finna, and I yell at him. Yeah. He start crying mm -hmm. because he thinks I'm trying to stop his fun. But in reality, I'm trying to protect him. No, facts. It's the same thing. Like, I don't even surround myself around people like that, bro. That's I don't I don't want to be around anybody that wants that's sabotaging. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be around people that sabotage. No, I want to learn. We from definitely other. like we like our biggest enemy sometimes oh the way God, people bro. self sabotage that. Oh my God, that's insane, ridiculous. dog. All right, so let's get back to the coaching. You you coach mm -hmm. people how to change their mindset so the bag can come. Yes. All right, so you don't teach people how to get money. No. You teach them how to change their mind. Yes. I feel like again, and I and, and this is the conversation I was curious to have because like for me it's so easy because like I don't need my mind my my mind changed right, but I think I like overlook so many people who who can use that. Like well, that well, why don't you think change. you have to have your mind changed? I mean, I feel like I'm I'm getting to it. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm I think I'm doing pretty well at getting to it. So you don't you don't there's nothing that you deal with mentally that could be getting in the way of something that you want physically. Ask me that question one more time. There's nothing that you're batting mentally that can be stopping you from what you want physically. Yeah, I don't know. I mean it's probably hard for me to answer that question because the I don't fact think that so. you said you don't know is actually a good thing. To to for to say it with certainty, like you really know. That's arrogant. It's like when I tell people, some people, you got to be careful of the people that say, I'm ready, mm. because most of the time they're not. And then you got to, you got to, the people that say they're not ready, that doesn't matter. You just have to be willing. Mm. So it's, it's never to say you're ready or say you're not ready is both just like not even worth it. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just be willing. Mm. And if you think that you're ready, it's arrogant. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Because are you really ready for, like, for, were you ready for that malfunction that happened today? It was frustrating. It bothered you. It made you feel away because you weren't ready for it. You wasn't prepared for it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, I feel like in life, we got to be careful with that. I, as long as you are always like, I don't know. Like, I can work on that. I mean, I, it, mindset I don't know. and mind made are two different things. I tell people that all the time. You can have your mind. People that have their mindset, like work on your mindset, don't have your mind made. No, you're right. Yeah. I, but even with that experience, like with the example, I don't. it wasn't that I was frustrated that I wasn't prepared for it. It was frustrated that, like, I think some things are out of your control right so exactly. for example like we supposed to be here at a certain time we wasn't mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so i feel like when it comes to when it comes to like success success is when preparation meets opportunity mm -hmm. we wasn't prepared for it right like you said but if we put ourselves in 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 a, in a position to be prepared for it things like that wouldn't happen you get what i'm trying to say that's yeah. what frustrated me so like if i'm late right yeah it's nobody else's fault but i'm late like i gotta i gotta take that out but now again it's a trickle down effect because i was late now mm -hmm. I put myself in a position where now something malfunctioned and now it's on me. You get what I'm trying to say? So like that's dope that you I, you said that. It's for, out of your control. So that's why that's I'm good. I'm frustrated because I know that without whatever I was doing earlier, 
I, I made myself late, right? And I shouldn't have been. You know what I'm saying now? Now that now it falls back on now my guests late. Now I got other people that's coming. At, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm pushing everything else back. Now my team gonna be late. You know what I'm saying? Because a mistake that I made. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So that's why. Like it's not really about the malfunction. It's about the beginning. Now my mind going back to the beginning. Like man, I should have, I should have, I should have. Yeah. You feel me? So like, but to answer your question, because I'm I'm naturally that's who I am. It's hard for me to say that uh, it's something that I'm going through mentally that's affecting. What I got going on, because I know that whatever is mentally, I can. I got. I'm the. I'm the master of my fate. I'm the uh, captain of my soul. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I'm the only one that can change that. Yeah. But saying all that, dropping back to my point, for me, when people say coaching your mind, it's hard for me to hear because that's who I am. So I, I'm automatically projecting on everybody else. Like, who oh. needs a coach? Like, why? Why y'all? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, change yeah. your mind. Like, what? What do we change? Like, you show know, me. Get to the money. Like, you know, you know how much you know who you sound like right now? Who? Practice. Oh, AI. Practice. <laughs> Look at Alan, bro. I respect dude. I actually ran into him at Linux one day. You know what I'm saying? He was like, "Hey, talk to my, uh, talk to my manager, bro." You know bro, what I'm he did that to you? Yes, he did that to me, bro. He, he did, did that to me, bro. Was, see, no cap. We was in LA. I try, bro. I don't even take pictures, bro. Yeah, me either, bro. But I don't do that, bro. I'm like, yeah. yo, I'm like, you know what? I'm, a, I'm a swallow my pride. Like, can we get a pic? <laughs> it was like, nah, bro. You want me the phone? Man, suck. <laughs> Chill, dog. Chill. Nah, for and he what? a little dude for real too. I don't give a. So like, it's like, dog. <laughs> like, yeah, he was smooth. He was like, man, talk to my man. Corny, bro. Like, I, I think so too. I don't that like stuff that. do be corny. Yeah, like, bro. bro, if you ain't want that, bro, you shouldn't have yeah. never lived a life, bro. Yeah. Especially, <laughs> especially a nigga like that, bro. Like, you a superstar, bro. Just look up to you, nigga. love you, nigga. like, bro. Like, and for you Change to like, the game. yeah, and for you to not want to take a picture for a nigga that want, first of all, like that that went out of his way to swallow that pride to ask you for a picture. I don't ask for no picture, bro. Especially Man. that situation that happened with baby when I first got to Atlanta when I was homeless. Bro, some chick told me go up to Gucci and get it. She said go. I went to Goodwill and got a shirt. I, so I ain't. I looked a mess, bro. I ain't gonna cap. I was not gonna get that job. But she said I, she was like, a, she had some plug to get me a job at Gucci, bro. So I went there for the interview. I was had my headphones in my ear, and then uh, I was listening to Freestyle. That's my favorite little baby song. Mm. And I was and I turned to my right, little baby right there. I was like, I was like, hey dog, this is my song. I'm listening to da, 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 da. Let me get a pick. And he was like, keep it effing moving. I don't like that, bro. Like, I was like, what? Man, all these can go to hell. That's- Corny, I don't care. <laughs> it, it was, I don't know what he was going, but one thing I have, I have empathy for people. You don't know what people be going through. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I don't care. And maybe bro. my awareness was off. Man, let me tell you something. But still, that me, still is trash. Let me, I'm, I ain't, I, I don't care. I don't have to take off for these. <laughs> I'm going to tell you one thing I've learned, right? People might forget your name, or people might f- forget what you did for them, but they, they'll never forget how you made them feel. Oh, you facts, know what I'm saying? Bro, yeah. So, like, when you out, you got to be cognizant of like how you treat people. So, to say, get the F on or something like that, line, that's it's corny, it's even if, man, bro, bro, I'm tired, bro, my bad, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be aware, like, and that's why we talk about, uh, not to get off track, but I was talking about, like, Kanye West, and I feel like as much as I love Kanye West, he was, like, he was um, irresponsible rapper. with his platform by saying slavery was a choice, as much as I love him. I just, I, oh, that's, yeah, that's just, one of my favorite things he said. Can I tell you why? Go ahead, man. Okay. Every, this is a, I talk with this about my students, right? Just like that. Some people might not agree with that Hitler line I say, where Hitler actually hated something mm-hmm. and made a draft. We should all hate something in a good way, like how Hitler did and using it for a good thing. Mm-hmm. But Kanye West actually, it, slavery, Harriet Tubman even said, Frederick Douglass said slavery was a choice as well. She didn't say that. No, bro. Did she you, said, I would have saved way more if slaves what? if they knew they were slaves. What is, what is, what does that, that mean? I don't know. What that. does that mean? Oh my God. Doesn't that mean it's a choice? No, bro. Doesn't that mean it's a choice? Okay, cool. I don't care. Bro, poverty's a choice. Slavery is a choice. Uh, bro, it's a mindset thing, bro. No, When Frederick not, Douglass bro. did say slavery is a choice. Okay, bro. It's Even not a their, mindset their, thing. Their actions show that slavery is a choice. It's not a mindset thing. Bro, this, Harriet, that's ignorant. Why do, you think that's, why do you think that's ignorant? Bro, I honestly feel like poverty is a choice. All of these things that people go through is a choice. Not, um, but it's not a choice. What's not a choice is what other people do to to you going against what they feel like you need to do. For example, if Harriet Tubman took a huge risk, her actions showed that slavery was a choice, did it not? Her actions. Wait, did her actions show that she had a choice to be a slave or not? Be honest. No. Her action. What was her actions? Bro, she decided, but she was one of the ones. She made a choice. Say she that, made a choice. Yeah, she made a choice to, to do what she do, did. To, what to, did she do? To save to save a no, lot no. of slaves. Even right? if you take out what she did for other people, mm-hmm. she made what a choice. did she do for herself? She made a choice to do what? To not to be a slave. Not be a slave. <laughs> what I'm saying is, was it, did she make that she had a choice? Yes. What I'm saying is, though, 
to say slavery is a choice, to say poverty is a choice, to say all of that, bro, and somebody that came from being homeless. It was my choice. This is the part that's hurtful, and I feel so bad for our culture, bro. Everything was my fault. Okay. It wasn't my family's fault. Me being homeless was not anybody's fault. It was my choice to do that. It was right. my choice. It was my actions. It was my irresponsibility. Why do you feel like it was your, your fault? Because I was the one that made the choice. Nobody put a gun in my head. And Okay, let me let me go like this. You know the movie called John Q? Mm -hmm. That's an amazing movie, right? Mm -hmm. I actually had a realization two days ago after doing a, thinking about that movie. I was like, wow. This man went inside of a hospital and held the hospital at gunpoint to get help his son mm -hmm. because he made bad choices. He went to a job. He didn't make good choices enough to get a degree. He didn't say he probably spent his money the wrong way. He probably went, instead of investing his money, he probably went on every anniversary trip, bought a whole bunch of Christmas gifts with his kids when he probably couldn't afford it. He did all this stuff with his money, made all these bad decisions, and had a child without really being able to afford a child. And when something bad happened to that child, he went inside that hospital <laughs> and made other people suffer for his accumulation of bad choices. This is what I feel like with our culture. We glorify toxicity. Mm -hmm. We do. It's crazy, bro. He, If you really look at it, can you agree that that's basically what happened in that movie? No. What happened in that movie? Bro, I don't remember the movie right offhand, but I know he probably couldn't afford Why couldn't he shit. afford it? But that don't mean because he made bad decisions, bro. I Are couldn't you? afford things because of my bad choices. Okay, bro. Bro, if bro, that so was So you got to So you going to tell me you come up here? Yes. With a I, I love you to death, bro. I love you too. But you sound crazy, bro. Bro, it's my Like, no. Tell this, me what you disagree with. This is dumb everything. T tell you me. come up here. Listen. <laughs> listen. Listen. You come up here, right? Yes. Promoting cancer awareness, right? Okay. Your aunt, your, your aunt passed away of cancer, right? Uh huh. That's like me saying your aunt had cancer and she couldn't get the right uh, procedures because your family didn't make choices to save enough money mm -mm. to save her. That's different. I don't see. Look, this is the thing. I okay. This is okay. I had a conversation with a client that actually said they don't want to be rich. Okay. I did mm -hmm. have a, with one of my student, not client, student. Mm -hmm. I broke it down to her. Myron Golden actually talks about this as well. You know who Myron Golden if is? If y'all had enough money, no, because y'all saved y'all. Wait, 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 no. Steve Jobs had billions of dollars and he died from cancer. That's oh. not that's not what I'm talking about. Okay. If my aunt was to blame someone else for, that would be crazy, right? But one thing about my aunt when she was battling that, she didn't blame nobody. She didn't say why me. She didn't do any of that, right? So what I'm saying is but this, But was bro. that her choice to have cancer? No, that was not her choice. Okay. That's But that's out of her control. And, and you don't Again, think poverty is out no, of some people's control? Listen, listen, bro. When, when certain people that I had around me was telling me, Trail, focus on your credit. Stop buying, stop playing video games. Start reading books. Stop hanging around these type of people. Invest in this. Do this. Go to school. Do this. Do that. I had a child at 20 years old. Wait, mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest. Go ahead. I had a child when I was 19, 20 years old. Right. Horrible decision. Right. I didn't have any financial literacy because of what I chose to be entertained by. I wanted to have fun. I wanted to go out. I wanted to smoke weed. I wanted to... Bro, those are my choices that caused me to suffer when I was 27. Okay, bro. I'm just being... Whose fault is that? What I'm saying I'm is... I'm not blaming the economy. Again, no, no. I'm not blaming the, account, the economy, but what we're not going to do is come... Like, for this show, I'm, t I'm, I'm taking up for these ones, right? Not saying... What, 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 the one thing that you said, mm -hmm. you said that somebody... They, they they told you to, to get your credit right. They mm -hmm. told you to. Uh, I didn't do it. They told you to. So guess what? You was introduced to information. So then after once you at once you was introduced to the information, then you had a choice to not to to either go take the information and do something with it or not do anything with it. When yes. we talk about slavery, they didn't have information, bro. Like these people were born into slaves. Like we, these people was they they were taken on a boat on a ship and captured and and, and said, "Yo, I own you." That ain't no. What do you mean? That's a okay, choice. No, hold okay. up, hold yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. How are you saying that's a choice? You you had a choice because you gave somebody gave you information, right? Now when we go back to nineteen or eighteen, you might not have known better. So if anything. Your, your parents had a choice to, 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 to give you the right knowledge. They didn't. You know what I'm saying? So I would never put that on you because you made a you made a decision. Yeah, you made a mistake, but you had to learn from it. Once you learned, once you had the, the child, right, and you saw what came with it, now down the line, you had a, a, a decision or a choice to make a, a, a better decision. The, the first time, 18, no, we talking about poverty people. I, I grew up in the projects. Me that too. wasn't a decision I made for myself. My mom's, that was something that I had to learn from my mom's. And when I, and, I, and, I, and that's why I, it's frustrating to hear you say this because as young guys, as young kids out there, we got to be careful we talking to you because I was one of them kids that mm -hmm. was coming up and people was, used to tease me for my mom's being on drugs. And I fought and I, 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 I got held back twice. 
right? From a youngin, I didn't know any better. But the moment I, st I started to understand that my, mo my mom's decisions ain't got nothing to do with me. Right. Yeah, I'm in the projects and I live the, uh, in the projects, but I'm not of the projects. This is, isn't who I am. Mm -hmm. So to say that I had a choice, no. Once you are introduced to the right information, then you have a choice. But the, just to put the say, to, and I love gay. I, like that's one of my, ask my wife, ask, that's one of my biggest people. But to say slavery was a choice is a misuse, a misuse of your platform and it's whack. And so you don't think, okay, from, see, the one thing about me, I look at everything in different perspectives and lenses. There is a person, like I said, we, we went through that. You answered it. We sometimes actions are more powerful. This is why I like to move by actions a lot more than words. Because like I said, if Harriet Tubman out of her mouth just said slavery is a choice, y'all tripping, mm -hmm. how many people, she would have, people would have been offended by her. But her actions alone showed that slavery is a choice. Her action showed that you just said that her action showed that she chose it was a not choice to for be a her slave. because she was able to get yes. some information along the line. We we but we can't. Yes. That's why I, when I'm going to coaching, right, and I say I got to stop doing it because because I have the knowledge. Don't mean everybody in the world got the knowledge, right? So think about it. I can interview like put it in layman's terms because we can understand this, right? Mm -hmm. I interview uh, DJ Drama, uh, Ti, uh, Mario, whoever, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like yeah, that ain't nothing. But I can't take away from how somebody who who loved DJ Drama might feel, right? I said to say like, because I'm introduced to this lifestyle. I'm I have friends that 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 know about coaching, that know about credit, so mm -hmm. I can say yeah as a choice because it's me. Same with Harriet Tubman. She might have been talking. To, we can't take like you have to take science class. They say you can't compare um, projects if the variables change. So we don't know who who she was introduced to, right? She might have been. She might have had a conversation with somebody who didn't who, who gave her some game to understand that she didn't have to be in slavery, or she was willing to, to die for her freedom. That's understandable. But we can't say that for everybody just because it's, it's it's true for you. Don't mean it's true for all. And that's like I don't like. That's why it's, I'm getting excited about it because it's like that's crazy. Yeah. Like no, like I would never. And that's same for people in poverty. That's same for you. That's same for me. That's like the same for the Bible, right? We, like I feel like God, He judges the the ones that know better, like more, like more, more, strict. more than the people that don't know. That's right there. But even in the Bible, it says this. This is see, I pay. You know, me and you locked in in church. So yeah, this we, say, in the Bible, got, yeah. that, in the Bible, it actually says there will always be the poor among you. Mm. But it doesn't say that everybody has to be poor. Mm. I, I okay, this is the thing, bro. I definitely was blessed by God with a gift of resilience and a thirst for knowledge. And I get okay. Yeah. That is definitely and you deserve a gift. your flowers for that. You know what I'm saying? Like I never ever was okay with being ignorant or stupid or like being cool. I was never that was always I was always a nerd. I was always, but I always embraced it. But what I'm telling you from my observation as a grown man, I have seen people pray. For a job and not put the job application in. Not facts. 100%. And then say, God didn't mean for me to have that job. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, I'm just talking about adults. Kids, I know, but for example, when my son didn't see me for a year, that wasn't his choice. Mm. I care more about the people that actually have the options. God gives everybody a choice. That's like somebody saying, I didn't have a choice to read. Bro, everybody has a choice, whether you accept it or not. God only gives us two things to control. You said it earlier. You said that. You don't really try to get too emotional about things that you can't control. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand that. But what you can control is how you react to things and your decision making. That's the only thing we can control. I can't control what you do, what other people do, what they got going on. But that doesn't mean the choices change. So bro. guess what, though? I had to learn that, though. Yes. I'm, so if I didn't, yeah. so if I never, that's like uh, like some, is this conversation, is it can go f f infinity because what happened is like some people believe in common sense. Some people believe that common sense isn't so common. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, for me, I had to learn that. So we would we put a, a gap or we put a uh we we draw a line at when I'm supposed to learn it? No, but I just feel like there's I'm talking about more of adults. Kids, I grew up in the projects. I was homeless, I was poor, I I got I was in foster care. I've been through a lot, but what's an suicide. adult though? So what, as a, the, but somebody this, that gets gets, no, gets arrested and, no. and is locked up for 20 but years, they is, still but why did you get locked up? Because of a choice. Okay. Bro, bro, I'm not, bro. I'm, I've been to jail before because of a choice. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm, I get it. I'm, I get what you're saying. It's cool. Even in the Bible, bro, ignorance is not excused. Ignorance is not excused. You're either going to heaven or hell. We already know that. Yeah, but also in the Bible, we, it's, it's grace and grace is real because what yes. we believe in. If you want to get into it, right? Mm -hmm. What we believe in that happened because why? We wanted to because we wanted to be stupid and we got kicked no, out of heaven. Not yeah. even that. I'm talking what, what we really believe in, right? Uh -huh. we, what we talking about is. That happened to teach people the truth, right? Facts. That happened yes. again to teach people the truth mm -hmm. because we understand that the truth was lost. 
Exactly. So the truth was lost, right? He had to come to, 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 to show us the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Same with life. You telling me that, yo, the truth can get lost. If, 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 if God can say, nah, I need my people to know the truth because it was lost, why can't me and you do that? But sometimes it's not. It ain't that, no but. Sometimes it's not that it's lost. Sometimes people just are in, entertained by what they like. That's the thing too. That's the thing. Bro, yeah, there's people. Yeah, that's the thing too. Th that's the I biggest. Won't, I won't. I won't there fight we that. go. That's but most, all I'm saying is two not, can wait, wait, be true. But that's why only two percent of the world live a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's why because the things that. Okay, this is how I look at it. The things that average people stumble over, are the things that successful people use as hurdles. Mm -hmm. For example, yeah, I'm with that. I'm sickness, that. I got Crohn's disease. That didn't stop me. I've been suicidal. I've been meant through mental health homes. I've been through a lot. I, I'm a by any means type of person. Right, but that, that everybody's that, not like that. Right, and I'm saying, I'm just saying two things. But it's true. a choice. All I'm saying is just like, who are you to sit up here and say, I got Crohn's disease, right? Mm -hmm. So I had a choice. So everybody that got Crohn's disease, if you don't get up and do what I did, then the hell with you. No, that's not that's not what I said. That's basically but no, no, what no, no. you're but saying. But this is what man. I'm saying. Wait, like, this, is, this is wait, wait. Hear me <laughs> like, out. Hear my perspective. I love this. This is fun, bro. This, I told you this you was so crazy. You said wait, 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 wait. Watch this. You know, actually, I hear this a lot when. So neat. No, no, look not, at not, not, not about not about me, nah, but whatever. I hear every. I hear a lot of people, even with Myron Golden. They think Myron Golden. Myron Golden said it. He said people say he, all he cares about is money. Everybody's not you, Myron Golden. Everybody's not you. Got bro. When you get into this coach, because people are going to start. You're going to start coaching people on how to build a successful podcast. You're going to have students, bro, that think that you're so special. Mm -hmm. And everybody's not like you, Jay. No, it's not a Jay thing. It's a if you want to be a successful person thing. I'm, I'm with There's that. principles, I'm, so that's I what I'm saying. I believe that, 100%. So I'm what I'm you. saying is, bro, most, this is why I feel, this is why I don't agree with the coaches that are doing all these coaches and these courses because they're selling people information by marketing them Lamborghinis, marketing them these lifestyle, hitting these pain points because these people are in a desperate mindset. So, yeah, you showing them that they can make all this money, they can get these cars, they can get this. Bro, and then they get into your program, they don't even got the 90, they don't even got the 2% type of mindset to even succeed in your program, but you sold them that. I don't move like that. That's why I tell that. every single person that I get, we are going to work on your mindset so you can actually retain the information and execute the information. That's a fact, though. I get that. So that's what I'm saying. Because I know that even though I do feel like everybody has a choice, I still feel like everybody has a choice with some parts of your life. But... I also know that most people are going to pick the wrong choice. That's, For example, okay, cool, I'm with that. If I got water and soda here, most people are going to look at the benefit of how good that soda going to taste more than all oh, the water don't really got a benefit when it really got the best benefit. Mm. It's easier to pick what makes you feel good. Facts. It's not about everybody don't got a choice. People are comfortable, and I don't also with slavery. Slavery That's, is slavery is not a okay right right now. They just turned the word from slave to employee. They didn't have the word employee back then. Everybody was a slave. It was only kings, queens, the royal family, and everybody under them was a slave. The only thing that's wrong with the black people, with our culture, is what they did to the slaves. Bro, even slavery is in the Bible. Mm. Slavery was not this evil act. It's not. Everybody, they just That's the word they chose to use. But now we use the word employee. It's the same thing except they offer you benefits. It's still all trash. So what I'm saying, it's all about perspective and how deep you want to go. When I hear the people hang on, black people hang on to the word slave. Everybody was a slave at one point in time. They're, everybody in the world was slaves if you weren't the top of the... Yeah, so but what happens is the word itself, I understand what you're saying. I, I don't have that much information on that, so I can't really speak to that. That's why I speak the way I do, because of the information. That's only why. Cool. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is from what I see in my experience, I would, I would again, I don't, I'm not 100%, I'm not qualified to have this conversation. It seems like it would, if just logically thinking, it makes sense that we take that word to be negative because of what came with it, not before it. And if 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 it was no slavery and um, what whooping us with what what what, what mm -hmm. switches it's and crazy. all, if that didn't happen, then maybe we would look at the word slavery as just an employee. Maybe we would, yeah. but because that happened and it happened for so long, we only see slavery as that, even mm -hmm. if it was another word. And I understand that. Like for example, me and my um, fiance talking about prenup, right? I feel mm -hmm. like. In our culture, on the social, uh, from, that from, from our circle, from I'm not even gonna say our culture. From our circle, all we see is prenup being bad. However, if you get outside of your circle, then it's you understand it's really just a contract. 
So all I'm saying is because that's what we saw, we only saw it that mm -hmm. way, what you expect people to think? They're going to look at us negative. You can't just walk around and say, slavery just changed. The employee, tell it to a black person when, that, when our ancestors went through hell, literally, in, in fire and burnt yeah, yeah. In, a, in, a, in, in, in a basement of ships. You ain't about to just say, oh, it's just no. But even the fact that we understand now that actually that was a, a, a transaction as well with black people that did that to black people. So it's almost, that's why I hate that that's, something that we blame our circumstances on. I just get tired of people using these things as a crutch, as a cripple, as a handicap. And I Thanks. wonder, I'm gonna be honest with you, the people that I see complain about the 40 acres in a mill and how bad slavery was and all this stuff, bro, they don't be getting no money. Mm. I'm be honest with you, that's just me being real. Even people, people that say, God don't want me, I hate when I hear people say stupid stuff like this. If God wanted me to be rich, I'd be rich. Bro, what? You gotta even, get up. Bro, even people say, somebody, what did somebody tell me the other, not too, like a couple months ago? Um, it was about, and what the hell was they talking about God and money? But you know, we make a sense when they talk about God and money, like God wants you to be poor. No. Or they say, all you gotta do is believe in Jesus and you go to heaven. Mm. All you gotta do is believe in Jesus. I asked the person, this is so funny. I wish I recorded this. I said, what's the most valuable thing on earth to somebody that's not trying to, that's not focused on God? Becoming rich, right? Can you just believe you're going to be rich and be rich? Isn't heaven more valuable than being rich? Mm. So you telling me that you can believe in Jesus and go to heaven and not put no work in and just go to heaven, but you can't do that to something that's less viable on earth. You can't just believe in Jesus and go to heaven. You can't just believe you're going to be rich and be rich. You got to put work in. And that's, the, that's why it sucks with the spiritual part, because if that was the case, right after that scripture where it says, believe that Jesus died for our sins, Savior, and all that, Right after that, it says, faith without works is dead. Mm. Then it also says after that, if you don't keep my commands, you don't love me. Mm. Then after that, it also says, so many people are going to say, didn't I prophesy? Didn't I do this in your name? And God is going to say, away from me, I never knew you. Mm. So people, I've realized that 98% of people believe that all you have to do is wish, dream, hope, and you're going to be, if God wants it for you, you're going to have it. No, I understand. When they told me, when, I, when they actually said, when my aunt died from cancer, this is a very traumatic experience. I remember at the funeral, they said God called her home. I said, no, humans are the ones that are putting cancer on this earth. Humans are the ones that's messing up the water, the food, the supply, the economy. Everything is our fault. Don't blame that on God. That's actually how people end up not, bro, somebody getting shot in the head. You telling me God said, oh, this person's going to get shot in the head. No, we're doing this to each other. God gave us all of this to see what we're going to do with it. And then when things go bad, we blame God. Mm. When we get millions of dollars and start, I know millionaires that sell dope that say thanks to God. Mm. Rappers get on stage and they thank God. Thank God don't care about this rap music. We're, that's what I'm saying, bro. All of this stuff, bro, it don't be adding up to me. That's why I actually stay away from it. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and winging in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I see you there. I see this entrepreneurship world. It's almost starting to look like the music industry to me. It's all fake. It's all cap. It's all false. It's all feeding off of people. The same people that's talking about black people, black people, let's build them up. You scamming them. Mm. You are. And I know scam stands for still confused about money, but me knowing that people are still confused about money, I'm going to I'm not going to play with them. Mm. I'm going to qualify each one of my students. I'm going to qualify each person that spent 15,000 with me. I'm not just going to get reach you with pain points and then drain you of your bank account. And then when you don't succeed, I say you just didn't do it. No, I know that I, they know what they're doing. They just taking the money, taking the money, taking the money. So you think that if somebody, um, I don't know, pay for your mentorship, mm -hmm. right? I qualify them. And, and, and they qualified. And let's say if they had a change of heart or something traumatic happened in their life mm -hmm. and they don't go forward, 
What do you mean? When you say don't go forward, what do you mean? I, like, I don't know. They don't do what they got to do to take the next steps on their own. Because at the end of the day, you could do all the teaching you want. You can instill all the great thoughts in their mind that you want. But at the end of the day, it's still up to them. Everybody got a choice, like you said, right? That's a fact. Right. So if they don't decide to go forward, then what you say? So this is the thing. So, for example, when I do my orientation with some of my students, I let them know my story about how my dad died and didn't stop. How I went to a mental health home, I didn't stop. How I went through marriage problems, I didn't stop. How I go through Crohn's disease, I don't stop. How I go through all these things, and I don't stop. And I ask them before we start the call. It's something called the BAM Society is what I call in my class. It means the by any means. If you want to be in the by any means society, this is the only way I'm going to accept you. Because when things go wrong, you're not going to blame me. I actually go through that process. I get about 50 to 100 students on there, and I go through that before they sign up. Because I don't want to deal with that. If I'm honest, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm honest about those things. I'm not so thirsty for the bread where I'm just trying to get what I can. I don't, Harvard, you can have a million dollars in your bank account right now. Can you just go say I'm going to Harvard? Mm -mm. You got to be accepted into that. That's how I treat my program. Everybody else ain't treating their programs like that. It's, you might as well be a tech college. But I feel like I hear that from everybody though. No, bro. I, I live it, bro. I'm Honestly. saying no, I hear that from all the entrepreneurs that do coaches, that do class. They all say, no, I don't accept everybody. Everybody say that. So, so I be getting, bro. So, I literally. So what makes people, you different? I'm curious. It, because I'm, I can show you. I but they show, all say that. No, 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 bro. I'm telling you, I got people that I okay. I did an interview. A person. This is my first time with a client paying me ten bands. Okay, this client reached out to me after the interview and said, "I was gonna pay for this person, but I'd rather pay for you because of the things that they were seeing." Bro, I'm. It's obvious with me, bro. I'm not money hungry. And my brand's not as big as everybody, so I don't got five hundred thousand people. So coming. what makes you different? Listen, my process. You know what you, you know what you, you, you know what you sound like to what? me. You know that girl that always be like, um, I'm different. I'm different. All right, what you bring to the table? I can cook and clean. What makes you different? My At, process. What process? When I go through the onboarding process, it's not just no. There's an application process. There's a questionnaire that you got to pass. Everybody got that though, Joe. I don't be who. I don't see it. Everybody I talk to you, bro. The same uh, uh, I've bro, I've seen them. I don't be seeing it, bro. Be honest with you, I don't see it. I have not seen it. So the, the 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 process makes you different. The process and my testimonies, my students. They, I'm bro. I even in my content, you've never heard me saying any of my content. I help you make a million dollars. I help you make all this money. I don't do that, bro. Did I tell you that I can help you help make a whole bunch of money, or did I tell you I help you all grow your brand the right way? Bro, I don't do that. When I talk to you, do I say I'm gonna help you make a whole bunch of money, or do I say I could help you do add some stuff to your brand? You should have said I can help you make a whole no, bunch of money. No, bro. No, that's said. cap. That's cap. Because <laughs> if you don't do what you're supposed to do, who are you gonna blame? You gonna blame me? Who me? If, bro, if I told you that I can help you make a whole bunch of money, that's subjective. So if you, if me, to me, a lot of money is 30000 a month and you only make 8000 a month, yeah, you're going to be like, nigga, what? I'm, I don't tell people I'm going to help them make no, money. That's I a way to, that's a, that's a marketing strategy to hit people with those desperate mindsets to get them. That's bait for them. Yeah, I don't fact. use that. I don't feel morally right doing that because mm. I know I will never have, I will never go into a crowd in front of my students to say, who wants to make a million dollars? I know that they don't want to make it. So tell me, give me some game. Give the viewers some game. Like, what what are you doing that's changing niggas' lives so much? Oh, so for, for example, what I asked the viral that video that went viral. I ask a lot of my students or anybody that's worked with me. I say, what's your why? Mm. What's your purpose, bro? Ninety percent of people don't even have that. What's your purpose? With in, in regards to what? It depends. I show. It, I got multiple purposes. First of all, cancer brand. Can't, my why is bigger than I in pretty much everything that I'm doing, right? I tell everybody, your why needs to always be bigger than I. That clothing brand was to help people. I became where I'm at right now because I served. What did it help? How did it, it help, help Cancer people? patients. I was yeah. donating, paying their rent, paying their bills, things of that nature, giving them hope. I gave them a community where they can nurture each other, love each other, talk to each other, come together. That's me bringing value, right? That's my why for that. My auntie died from cancer. I wanted to help do something with a legacy in regards to that. The way I coach, I help people find their value, the value of their story, and I help them see that, that your story is the inventory for you to actually make money. Why? Why are you doing that? Why am I doing that? Yeah. I mean, because everybody that's, coaches, that's, they making money for being coaches, so it seems like that's cool to do. When you say, why do I do that, what do you mean? What's your why? That's what I'm telling you what my why is. My why is to help people find their value, their true value, find the value of their story so they can actually build business. That's still surface way. level. Why? Why? Why, why do you want to do that? That's my passion. Why? That's what I'm good. That's my skill. That's what I love to do. It still sounds like something that's tangible. I, I can do this so I can no, make money Tangible, from Tangible is good. Right. So what? what, what I, I want to hear something deeper than that. Pause. Like, why? Why? 
I'm telling you. You probably never got I could I should be your coach. They get like, <laughs> why I'm asking why? Bro, because I see a lot of people struggle in an area in entrepreneurship because they don't have these tools to succeed. Mm. And I get a thrill, I get a kick, I get joy out of helping people knock those barriers down and jump over them. No, that's, that's good. Yeah, that's why I do that. That's good. That's really what I love to do. So I have a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And my podcast, I like to sell hope. And mm -hmm. I like to sell like transparency. I feel like transparency is bigger than everything. Mm -hmm. I feel like transparency is bigger than any currency, right? Especially if you can't bring, they don't have to bring money. But what happens if I can feel, if I feel like I can relate to you, mm -hmm. then I feel like I can do it, right? Why do that? I do that? I do that. I do that because I never seen that coming up. You gonna text on your phone? You gonna talk and no, have a conversation? Yeah, All right, look. I say that I do that because when I came up, I never knew that I could own the the platform. I always saw the host on the platform, mm. but now I want to infiltrate this, the industry. I want to get in. I want to be the host and own it. So I want to tell you that, yo, the little kid out there, I was you, or not even. If you don't believe it from me, because I ain't I ain't big enough. Pause. I ain't I ain't get to that level. Cool. I'm going to show you how I can work my ass off. I'm going to get the person that you look up to, and I'm going to show you that he got the same story as me and the same story as you. So you can get motivated and do the same thing we're doing because we ain't no different than you. That's my why. Right? Bro, I love that, bro. So like when That's I good. ask you what's your why, it ain't because if you is bigger than me. Why? You're bigger than I. Like, no, why? Like, why are you really like, bro, because I, I came up, man. My aunt was the closest person to me, man. She passed away from cancer. That shit hurt. And I don't want nobody to go through that. Not saying that got to be your why, but I'm yeah, just but for curious. The cancer, yeah, yeah. I, I have multiple. Yep. I have for the clothing brand. That's what my why is. I'll explain that part. But every part that I'm doing, even for my the thing I'm doing as far as a client success manager, I see a lot of these course creators, mentors, all of them. They get all these people in their programs, but they don't have somebody to actually nurture them and help them succeed in that program. Mm. It's called analysis paralysis. You heard of that before, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. So. How you want to make you make money? Do this, do this, da 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 da. They get all that information. They get overwhelmed within the first week. Mm. So now these course creators and, and and all of these mentors, they're getting chargebacks now because they didn't have somebody actually nurturing them to get them be, make, help them in that process. They mm. got overwhelmed. They want to they want their money back. But if you had somebody in that program like me to actually help them with their mindset, hold them accountable, let them know that this is not meant to be easy. This is if it's easy, you're not going to get better. No, you get what I'm saying, but you got if you had somebody nothing like worth that, having is easy. Not, but a lot of people don't have that mindset because they're entitled to success. There are some people in this world that feel like if I pay twenty thousand dollars for something, that means I got to become successful. But they pay you paid for college. Mm. You went to college. Did you ever go ask for the money back at Harvard? <laughs> because you didn't. Did you ever? Did you go back to NWTC or whatever? Albany State or whatever school you went to and say, I want my money back. I didn't get the degree. I didn't get the job that I wanted. No. But when it comes to us black people in these in this course creating situation, these people, don't they don't respect us the same way. You mm -hmm. didn't go to college. You didn't ask for your money back. But you didn't succeed in this. You want your money back. That's crazy. But because they're picking and choosing. Mm -hmm. But it's because of how we're packaging it. You got to think when you go to college, they make you feel like you're going to succeed as soon as you get there. They got you in a classroom. They give you a certificate. They give you an orientation. You're meeting the professors. You're doing walkthroughs. You go into the auditorium. Everybody's happy, right? They give you a card. They make you feel like you're a part of something. Mm. That's why when people, even if they don't succeed in college, they never go back and ask for a refund. But at the same time, with college is a little different. Like I feel like with me, college shit, to be honest, mm -hmm. if I would have known this before. You never would have went. Nah, I probably would have still went. I would pay for the networking experience. I would pay for that. Yeah. That's and honestly, I probably would go back again and do uh if I could go couple go back a couple years yeah. and do it differently. Like that was the big that was the biggest marketing Bro, market in the world. Like if I knew what I knew know now, then oh I did the podcast and everybody on the on, on, on oh. campus, I'm gonna go crazy. See, but that's because of your that's your skill set. But you know what I'm saying? That's what you're good at. But most people, but I realize this. There's gifts and there's skills. Mm. The gifts that God gave me was resilience. Mm. The other, me being able to speak was a skill. I right. paid for that. Some people be like, Trail, everybody not like you. You got a gift. Stop. They don't even know the, to differentiate the two. This is not a gift. Speaking mm. is not a gift. Mm. It's a skill. Most people don't want to work to build skills. And you say you think your skill is what? A skill. My skill is communication. Learning how to learn. I learned how to speak. I mean, what was your gift? A gift is my resilience. Yeah. The fact that I can go through homelessness with a smile on my face. I can go through foster care. I can do all these things. Poverty, all of these things with a smile on my face and just still be. I could the gift that God gave me to not be insecure. I could when I was homeless and broke, I was around millionaires. I never felt intimidated. Mm. I always was inquisitive and wanted to learn. Most people don't get inspired; they get intimidated, and that's why they get stuck in their positions. Or they choose to hang around the people that they're comfortable around, 
and they end up hanging around them, which means they hanging themselves. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So I've never been like that. And because of that gift, that definitely helped me in my journey. Mm. I never wanted to be the smartest person in the room. I was always uncomfortable. I never looked at what, even when I was in college, I dropped out. I asked the professor, I said, hey, I was in college for business administration and entrepreneurship. And uh, I asked the professor, with all due respect, I'm always respectful when I talk to people. I was like, hey, unless I'm playing basketball. <laughs> but I was like, hey, man, uh, what? how many successful businesses do you have? At this time, I knew the owners of the Green Bay Packers, so or the GM of the Green Bay Packers. So I, I saw them. They were rich. I'm talking about rich, mansion, rich. So I was like, and they have successful business outside of what they do. I was like, what successful businesses do you have, professor? He said, oh, I don't have any. How much money do you use? I make about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. Why am I learning from you? Mm. I dropped out. Went to my little job at Sprint to be a manager. Mace, I was making more money than him working at Sprint. Mm. So I, I've always been like that. I want to learn from the people that are where I want to be. I'm never going to learn how to get financial advice from somebody that don't got no money. No, facts. You can teach me all. You can show me all the dumb things you did with your money. I could take that and say I can learn from that. But essentially, I'm going to look for the person that got the money, kept the money, grew the money. That's who I want to learn from. People actually get offended when I say that. But I, I tell them, isn't there something called free speech? Freedom mm. of speech. If they there's something that. called freedom of speech, that means I have freedom to who I want to listen to. Mm. But people don't like hearing that. Trail, you judgmental, man. You only listen to rich people. And you only listen to broke people. <laughs> but I don't feel like, I feel like we got to stop being so sensitive about this. If you want to be successful, this is a painful journey. So let me ask you this then. you Because you're coaching, man. How you teach my man, people how to get some money? I can teach them how to make some impact. I can teach you to find out what your story is. So how do you teach somebody that? So first thing I do, we do an interview. So... And even in my book, Traumas to Commas, it actually helps people extract their story. And a lot of people, when they get through seeing their story, they're like, wow, I didn't know that this was so powerful. I didn't know that. I, didn't, I forgot about this part. I forgot about this. Like, wow. Then I teach you how to tell your story. Mm. Then I teach you how to attach your story to a brand, a candle, a T-shirt, a podcast, so whatever teach, you want to do. I skip the orientation. Teach somebody right now. Let's, let's go through uh, a walkthrough. Ask me a question. What do you want to start? I just asked you a question. T can you teach my people how to make money? No, no. Give me an. I'm talking about what. Give me a hypothetical business. So let's start from start. the beginning. Let's not short, short it. Okay, so if I did the interview process and we found out your name is Jay, mm -hmm. you know I um, like podcasts. Let's go you with like you like podcasts. Yep. Okay, so I'm just gonna make up some valuable things about your story. You're we can from, talk you're about you from Baltimore, right? Yep. Let's talk about the real. So okay, baby. Right, so where are you from? I'm from Baltimore. You from Baltimore? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what's your passion? Like, what was your show? What's like? What do you think are the most impactful things in your story? What's the most impactful thing that's ever happened in your life? The most impactful. Impactful, traumatizing. What is it? Because actually, I'm gonna ask you this: There's something called um, the Y stands for what hurts you, mm -hmm. what healed you, and who helps you. Answer those three questions for me. So, what hurts you? What's something that really hurts you? I think. Um, not having the the support that I thought I needed or a, a lot of my peers had in which from way? my parents like I feel like if I was if I was if I was given like just more support I would have probably been more successful I probably would have never gotten to podcast I probably I probably really did good in football okay um yeah I think that was the thing that hurt me the most just not okay. having that 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 ongoing relationship with me and my mom's like I feel like we had a great relationship coming like starting but then as I got older like I kind of had to like go on my own and I think that's the part that hurt me yeah, the so most. supports the lack of a support system mm -hmm. like, that's a big that's big bro a lot of people go through that that's good what about what who helped you who helped me mm -hmm. that's the other why it stands for who helped you yo by the grace of God every a lot of people I'm not gonna lie like I had uh family like friends like family what we call it Friends that became family, mm -hmm. like shout out to like my uh my my brothers that I call like uh from all uh, from the hood that I had like they were the ones that I was staying with when I had to leave college and I didn't know where I was gonna go. You know what I'm saying? Like essentially being homeless, but I wasn't homeless because I always had somewhere to go. Okay. Right when I didn't know where I was gonna call, I could just call my brother Fraser Antoine. Like yo, his parent, his mom's my aunt boy let me stay. Call my brother Justin, his mom's move would let me stay. So like the coaches, my coaches when I played football, they helped me. Uh. Shit, my my um the faculty members at school, my uh the teachers, the guidance counselors, like all of those people helped me for sure. And you had a lot of love around you, bro. Yeah, for That's sure. That's dope. Okay, yeah. so what healed you? That's the last one. Shit, I don't even think you can ever like. I'm thinking I'm still on that journey to be honest. You're still on that journey. I tell people too, like healing is a journey, not a destination, for sure. But there should be a part. For example, when I was homeless, that was a big thing I was dealing with at that time. Something that healed me was 
the support system I had. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's always something that helps you get over that hump. What was something that got you over that hump outside of that, uh, after the who helped you? Like, what helped you sustain it? Uh, to be honest, bro, I think it's just something I'm still dealing with. It was just, like, learning that nobody was going to help me get through it. That I always had to, like, that, just to be honest, I had to come to that realization that nobody's going to come save me. So this is this what I'm gonna do. For, this is what I would do for. So you want to start a podcast? So what I would do with, for you, bro? This I feel like you're actually really good at telling your story. A lot of people actually don't have that skill. So what I'm gonna do, bro? I'm gonna give you a content rollout. This is what I want you to do. I want you to get in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. I want you to do short form content. Just practice and telling your story. Your story is your inventory to start scaling and grow a business. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think you need a product. You need this. This. You need this. No, your inventory is your story. Once you, once you master telling your story, you could attach that to a T-shirt or a podcast. How do I, I how, help me master telling my story? I think I'm pretty good. I how, think you're pretty good at it. So what I do to, what I would recommend you do to actually really get good at telling your story is actually start off with the content. Start going live. Start recording the uh, short form content. Just telling very personal, vulnerable parts of your story. Where do Tell I start though? You start with just speaking in front of a camera. Just get your phone. You don't mm. need a whole bunch of fancy. But I'm saying, at like, what part of my story? Where, where, where? Start from when you was young. Mm. Start, bro. You got to think. This is why I tell people. I know a couple of podcasters that do. A lot of, I know influencers, right? They have big brands, but as soon as they make one mistake, guess what happens? Their brand gets shut down. They mm. get blackballed. You know why? Because they didn't make people fall in love with them first. For example, right now, Beyonce could slap a baby and people are going to probably say she that baby probably deserved it. <laughs> right? It's because she built a brand that people can love. She built the community. She built the beehives. Right? Rihanna built, built her community. Kylie Jenner, they built a community so that even if they do something wrong, people are still going to love them. Mm. For example, when Chris Brown did what he did, right? For example, he went through it. He lost. Oh, he can't even go pop no more. You know, pop was the bag. If he would have did more community stuff, did this, the third, that's telling your story and making people fall in love with you is actually insurance for your brand. Mm. So when something goes wrong, they got something to fall back on. It's just a foundation. I tell people all the time, you need a foundation to build anything because when, no matter what disaster happens, if it gets tore down, what guess what you can do? You can build on top of that again. But a lot of people build businesses, brands, relationships, and things like that with no foundation. Mm. So when something bad happens, they lose everything and they can't do it. They can't replicate it. Because you never had a blueprint or a foundation. Mm. So you telling your story, hey, man, I rem hey, I remember when I was eight years old, when I was in foster care, bro, like, I remember this dude beat the hell out of me for my socks. And I, only, and I had one sock. It's going to make people laugh. You're going to make people cry. They're also, but they're going to fall in love with you. So no matter what you drop, they're going to buy it. Mm. Sell yourself. Sell your story. And then well, you could drop a panty line and it's going to go. Mm. You could drop socks. You could drop this. You could drop that. More people, most people put so much into the shirt. That's why I see a lot, even beautiful girls, they they be they post all these things about their body and they get all the likes in the world. But as soon as they post something positive, what happens? They don't get no love because they were more focused on the body. You get what I'm saying? That's not sustainable because that's going to fade. You know what I'm saying? So what I would do is get really good at telling your story. I'll sit down and all that we can do, you know, out of the content. And then after we get good at telling the story, now we can attach a digital product of your choice to that. Mm. And yeah. this is what you do for people. This is what I do for people. But I do it in group settings. And then what we do is um, we do, I got a criteria, I got homework, note taking giveaways. Like It's a lot of stuff that I do with these people. And that's why I'm, I'm still working with a lot of my clients because their mindset development is not a destination. So why 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 should I work with you and not the other coach in Atlanta? It, if some, no one's doing what I'm doing first. No one's doing what I'm doing, first of all. Nobody's doing what I'm doing. So, and that's the thing, like. But if I find somebody who's doing what you're doing. Why, why should you why, work why, with me? Mm-hmm. So far, why would you work with me? Let me ask you that. What's something about me? No, no, no. Why? I'm asking you. It's like you asked my why, who, and why, Yeah, because I honestly feel like this This is what I'm good at. I don't, and be, not to sound arrogant, because I know no one is doing this, I know that someone working with me is going to take them to the level that they want to go to, because I know what's stopping them is their mental. It's not, it's not any, it's, if you don't have a good support system as an adult in business, or if you don't, if anything is going wrong in your business, nine times out of ten is because of something that you're doing wrong. That's a fact. In entrepreneurship, I realize that even in relationships, most of the time when the relationship is not working is because someone is doing something wrong. Mm. That's why you can make as much money as you want and the marriage can still fail. Because it's not about the external things, it's about the internal. So I will help you get over those internal and mental obstacles that stopping you get from getting a destination you're trying to get I, to. I don't know if this is, like, you help, like, I know we was doing it like a, uh, mm -hmm. like a, a, uh, a improv or like just, yeah, you know, yeah. um, role play. But like, you just helped me out. I like that. That was some good game. If I can return, mm -hmm. if 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 I was you, mm -hmm. right, and I don't know because I know in the 
coaching game is different. Like everybody want money, million dollars. But if I was you and somebody asks why you should work with me, just from what I see from my mm-hmm. ex- from my experience, I would simply say, not because I'm good at it, because you said that's a skill I worked at. It. Mm-hmm. Not because nobody else is doing what I'm doing, but simply because I care. Because that separates you from everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because what happened is I can be good at everything. Mm-hmm. But do you care? Or because it's different from you can be good at something, I'm just doing so I can get the bag. We see that oh, we see we see most of the world people have jobs and careers because they need to pay the bills, need to get they need to get by. Not many people are doing what they love to do. And the people because it's not many, the people that we see doing what they love to do are very successful because they love to do it and they're able, they're blessed to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Right? So, and again, I'm not, I, I don't know. I'm just, this is just me speaking off top. This is our first time having this conversation. We'll have many more. Yeah. But me, it would just be like, yo, you should work with me because I care. You might have 10 other people who, who say they care and they might care. I'm not going to knock them. I like that. But bro. I can only tell you about me. And if you seeing me right now and you work with me, at least you know you got somebody that's, that cares about you. Is that simple? Bro, that was my nigga. That was fire. Yeah. Hey, you see, I'm a coach that's always getting coached. That's another reason why I feel like I'm growing at the rate. I actually realized this too, bro. To go back to that point, I realized a lot of people, this is why I don't like telling people how to make money as well. Because if you ask somebody what's the meaning of stable, mm-hmm. people are going to look at the cars, the jewelry, the sky rises, the going out to eat at rock stop, whatever, right? They're going to think that's stability. That's not what stability means. Mm. The word stable means you're able to pay your rent, able to eat three times a day, able to do the common things in life without it feeling like a burden. Mm. All that other stuff is abundance. And because people don't actually know what stability is, they actually are never content. And we know how spiritually not being content is actually really dangerous, right? Mm. And because they're not content, they're always in scarcity mindset. They're always thinking in lack. They're always saying this, that, and the third, and that's why they're not growing either. But when I tell you that I work with so many different walks of life, bro. I thought I saw it all, like what people can go through. I, Bro, I really thought that it was like, no, I'm seeing like a lot of people are struggling with their mental, bro. The entitlement, the arrogance, the fact that they think everything is supposed to easy, be easy, blaming God for their situation, blaming their family, blame, and, rea- and no one's taking accountability. Like when I tell you that, I honestly see why most people are not successful because their mindset is trash. Mm. I can tell somebody right now how to get their credit fixed, how to do this, how to do that. They either going to think it's too good to be true. They're going to think it's a scam. It's not happening fast enough for them. They're scared to invest because everybody scammed them before. They got traumas. They got this. That's why my stuff is called traumas to commas. Mm. I, I dealt with traumas. I turned it to commas. And commas is not just the money. Commas isn't just the thousands of dollars. It can be the thousands of people I made smile, the thousands of people I've impacted, the thousands of this. It's so many other things in the thousands of dollars. But most people are focused on what? The dollar. Mm. If you actually worry about serving, you'll make way more money. Think about it. I'll, my biggest income generator right now is me helping rich people. That's literally my, I serve rich people and I get paid retainers. That's my biggest income generator right now. So I realized what got me to this level for real. I said this with my boy Glow Jays, the word observe. Observe means to what? Look, Mm -hmm. always looking. You're like, you're searching. The word servant is, serve is in observe though. So if I look at the word observant, I'm always looking to serve. Mm. That's how I look at that. And because my boy Neil told me one day, I went to a pop-up shop and I was folding shirts. I I went there to support and I ended up just folding shirts. Neil was like, you are really going to serve your way to success. And that's exactly what I did, bro. Most people don't want to serve. They don't. So how does somebody, um, like, I don't know, how much is your classes? Like, how much is that? I got a $20 a month class. And then if somebody want coaching, you know, it's different packages for that too. What's the packages for coaching? It depends on which one you want. The highest one is $15,000. 15000 What's the lowest one? The lowest one is $2,500. $2,500? $2, mm-hmm. right, so look. What? You said that. He was like, yo, why you ain't ask? The, uh, you should have just asked. I would have paid you, bro. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what you said. That's what I need you to do. Okay. Put you on a hot seat since everybody keeps the most serving. I'm tired of you coaches and fucking entrepreneurs. <laughs> I'm tired of these niggas, bro. Everybody getting so much money. So, okay, cool. I'm it's, doing okay, bro. I'm, I'm stable. No, 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 no. I'm stable. Nah, nah, I'm nah, able nah, nah. to pay my nah, rent. No, 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 no. So, that's what I need. I need one person, right? Mm-hmm. They can subscribe to this video, follow you. You only have to follow me. 
Follow, subscribe to this video. Follow Trails, mm -hmm. Trails CEO, T R E L L S C E O. Follow him on Instagram. Comment under my picture. Tag him under my first picture and say, I don't know, coach. Traumas the commas. Traumas the commas. Hashtag traumas the commas under my first video and tag him so I can see it. Choose one person. You got a coach him for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're, you're, you're small. You're, you're less fee. Twenty five hundred. Okay. For free. Okay. And I ain't done. You gonna work for this shit? Dang. They and better, they, they gotta be good. This though. is the no, 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 no. This is the no. We gonna do it just for the love. Okay. You said yo. If you to ask me all the pages, you said that I, was I did say that. I did say that. You my and, brother. And I need you to give somebody some money. Not me. I ain't asking. What? How much money? A thousand dollars. So I got to give them a thousand dollars and coach. No, them? somebody different. Somebody different. One person you can coach. One person thousand. Well, how, how, how far are we in, Kyron? We in hour four minutes. So if they see this, they deserve it. If they make it to this part, this is an hour I'll four. Do, how about this? How about we do? How, how about we bust it down? I see. How about I give them a choice? Because you know we talked about choices. We said poverty is a choice. Okay. They can take the thousand, or they can take the fifteen thousand dollar course. I'm with that. Shake on it. So let's 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 get the let's get this. Look, this is what you gotta do. Subscribe to the channel, and you gotta tag me. So like, post it on Instagram so I can see you subscribe. Go to my last, my first post on Instagram. <laughs> tag, follow him first. Get a shirt. Tag him under my first video. Is a video. Under my first post on Instagram, tag him so I see it and just say, um, I'm sorry, what is it again? Hashtag what? Traumas to commas. Traumas to commas. Did, did, did Spell I, it right. If it's not spelled right, it's out of did there. I, did, I make, did I make sense, y'all? I make sense? Subscribe. Show me that you subscribe. Under, follow him. Under my first post, tag him. Hashtag traumas to commas. Spell it right. He's going to give you an option to do his highest level coaching course, which is 15000 or... You could just take a thousand dollars and just get some food and shit. That's that's actually a poor decision, but no, nah, hey, no, nah, don't try to trick him. Nah, nah, nah. nah. That's what we're not gonna do. I'm gonna judge you if you take the band. Uh, and that's cool. Take. If I'm gonna judge the hell out you. Let him judge you, if and you I'm gonna block him. Uh, I'm just, I'm just, let him judge you. If you want that thousand, take that thousand. And I'm gonna dispute it with my I'm about band. to start. I'm about to start. <laughs> nah, I'm about to start putting. I'm listen. I'm about to start putting fire to niggas' asses up here. Pause. No, that ain't no, cause you everybody getting so much money, all these coaches and all this. See, but that's the thing. I don't talk about money. No, I don't care. I don't even act like I got I money. I don't care. You all right, said, let me, let me. You said that if I would have asked you, because I told you my fee. You said if I asked you, you would have paid me. I'm not asking for that. I'm saying give it to somebody else. Okay. I ain't say give it to me. You, you could have said give that. it to somebody you else. You no, I, no. He love y'all, cause he could have took no, that. No, it's about fee. the people for real. He could have took that. You talking about serving? Are you sweating now? You like. Oh, that's just hat. I ain't get a, I ain't get a, I ain't low key ain't get a haircut. He lied. Never came to this nigga. Jay, My wife bro. said I look like you today, bro. It was weird. Bro. I, I, like, I do not, that. bro. I do not look like you, bro. Do y'all think we look alike? I don't go for him. Huh? People say that. I think people say that. I don't know why. Hmm. You must be a handsome man. They, they here. All right, bet. Let's let's uh, everybody here. Yep. Last thing I want to say about God. Yeah, we got to end it with God. So I want to know every every person that is starting a business. I want you to realize this. Everything that God makes or creates has three principles that I apply to me being an entrepreneur. The first principle is everything grows slow. Mm. Plants, animals, humans, babies, everything grows slow. Can you name one thing that grows fast that God makes? I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's something nothing, like that. Nothing fat. Nothing grows fast that God makes. Not even flies. It's only look fast because of the dimension that we're in. It looks like the fly only lasts a week, but to their dimension, it takes probably a three, four, five years. So the ne the next thing is everything that God makes mostly has is in twos, two eyes, even our bodies, two eyes, two feet, two two lips, two hands, whatever. Everything's is in, in twos. It takes two people to make one baby, right? The third thing is everything God creates is a system, a solar system the ecosystem, our immune system, the cardiovascular system. So everything should have a, if your business should have systems. So the three principles are make sure it grows slow. Do it. Don't do more than two things and make sure you're doing everything with systems. That's hard. That's the last bar I got for entrepreneurs. And if you apply that, you know what I'm saying? You should be winning. That's hard. I like that.
Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks but to man, God, go man. to go to my first post and get this thousand dollars, man. I'm <laughs> pressure on these dicks, man. I appreciate it, bro. Hey, yes, sir, man. Love, man. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is a wrap. We out.